Hello, this is Paolo and welcome to the second part of the Blender Survival Guide. So we're starting where we left off from the previous video. We have our desktop completely customized and it's time now to add the finishing touches. There's one thing that is missing for example here is to know exactly what is the point of view of the camera here because this is a top view and this is a side view but we don't have any indication of that so let me show you how we customize the preferences in blender now pay attention to this area here it's, it's called user preferences at first it looks like it's a normal menu, like what you expect in any application. Well, so why it's called user preferences? Well, here is the secret. If you move the mouse in the area here where I have it and click and drag down, it turns out that this is just another Blender window with a header at the bottom which technically should be called a footer but you see that is in fact a header so what you thought it was a menu in reality is a window that is being collapsed to just show the header and that window with the information icon here is in reality the user preferences panel. Now there are a, a few important configuration options that we can change here. Let me start. View name. If you click on view name, pay attention to this area here and this area here and this window here. If I click view name, say if I toggle now we see this is the top view, this is the right view, and this is the camera view. Ortho means orthogonal, and persp, of course, means perspective. So in this way, Blender tells us that we are looking at the right side view, and this is orthogonal, which is generally the preferred way of looking at your scene. It makes it easier to align objects together. But then we do want to have a camera point of view, and that has to be in the perspective view so that it gives us the correct point of view of the scene how it will be correctly rendered so view name should be selected okay then we leave this stuff alone in the view rotation I personally prefer turntable but this is really a matter of personal preferences but you have to try it. I generally prefer turntable and what that changes is the way the view reacts to the orbit maneuver, to the orbit operation. Pan and zoom remain exactly the same but when I rotate the camera around, see what I what I'm doing here is to move the mouse basically sideways and I obtain that kind of reaction. If I change it to trackball, it has a, a different feel to it. Try it, see what you like. And I generally like the around selection, which is basically allowing to do a rotation around the subject. So if I, if I put this on the on the side view and I rotate the view will rotate around the cube okay so this is more visible so these are two options that I generally like then there is an interesting option here that is smooth view now take a look at the normal I mean normal the default behavior of blender if I switch from top view to front view to right view normally the switch is done immediately it's a switch but look at this if I enter a value here in the smooth view and I 
like uh, you know anywhere between 450 and 600 let's try with 600 now blender will animate it isn't that nice I like it a lot so it's up to you what value you want this is expressed in milliseconds okay so let's let's continue there are other options that you can try um, generally I don't mess around with this much what I like to change is the file paths and that is because from time to time you need to install some additional Python scripts don't be too concerned about this a way of extending blender is through Python scripts Python is a computer language those scripts are kind of similar to plugins in After Effects so there are tons of freely available Python scripts out there to do all kinds of operations and in fact I just released my After Effects exporter which is a special program to export blender scenes to After Effects how you install those scripts by default the location where blender looks for additional scripts is fairly hard to find and um, it has the disadvantage that even when you find it because it's part of the program where you installed the program in the same directory where you installed the program if you change a new version of blender then the new version will not find the scripts because they are together with the old version if you erase the old version all the plugins will be gone well there is an alternative that is much much simpler here in Python scripts you can point to a folder on your hard disk where additional Python scripts are looked for and uh, what I usually do in my configuration is here in my home directory this is on the Macintosh if you're on Windows you have a directory for your account I don't know what's called on Windows um, I usually refer to that as the home directory which is the same term we use under Unix in general so in the home directory I create a folder called blender and inside that folder I have another folder called scripts so if I want to connect to this directory I go to Python scripts here which is under file paths and I click on the little folder icon here which opens the blender file manager which is fairly different from any file open dialog box anyway you usually click on this button here which will have the directory where your account is your uh, home directory or under Windows should be your personal directory whatever that's called and inside that I'll be able to go under blender and then I have scripts okay now I can select the script path and now it's in here so in this way I can install scripts in this directory and the next time I start blender they will be automatically found all right so let's click on this bring it up and we are back to normal but we didn't save the configuration yet and I don't want to because there are a few other settings that we want to save one of the great features of blender is that it allows you to customize almost everything in the user interface including all the rendering defaults I usually render my scenes in the same way I use high definition resolution I use a 16 by 9 frame I use a sequence of ping files and I usually need an alpha channel now we haven't looked at that yet but if you look in the buttons window here 
you'll see that we have a few different buttons for different parts of the operations that you perform in Blender. Now, for example, shading refers to materials. Now we have the default cube selected, and so we have a material that is connected to that cube. This is about the object parameters. This part is about editing that object. And this button is about the scene settings. And the scene settings are those settings related to the rendering of frames or animations in Blender. While we haven't looked at any of this stuff, if we click Render, for example, Blender will just render the scene with our cube and a lamp. And nothing particularly interesting here. But you can see that this is in the same aspect ratio of the frame shown by the camera. Okay. Well, what if your rendering settings are not 800 by 600 by default. This is not how you work. Maybe you work a completely different resolution. Instead of changing these with every new scene that you create, you can set these numbers to your preferred size and format. So in my case, I generally render at 720p, which is 1280 by 720. And now we see that the frame of the camera has been changed to 16 by 9 ratio. I don't render in JPEG. JPEG doesn't support an alpha channel. I generally prefer alpha channel. So I click on the format and I select ping. And then I usually create animations at 24 frames per second. The 25 is, of course, the European-centric default Blender is developed in Holland, and also the RGB button is not correct for what I want to do. I want an RGBA, which means RGB plus alpha. Okay, so now we have changed this. Everything is looking fairly good. One thing I can improve is the framing of the camera. Now, the camera can be a little closer to the subject. Now, if I click on the camera, you'll see that this frame is actually the border of the object that represents the camera. The camera's frame is really this dotted line. So I can zoom in quite a bit, okay? And if I want to darken the outside of the camera frame, there is an option for that with a camera selected go to the editing button and you activate the Passport 2 which is the French version for what we call a mat in the US I'm fairly sure that we should call it a mat but it's okay the Passport 2 automatically sets the darkening of the area outside the camera's frame and you can see here the difference when I toggle it. The alpha is determining how much darker the area is. So this is really up to you. I think you know, it's setting around 40% is generally good for me. Now we can do the last adjustment. We have everything in the right position. Our frame number is set at 1. Our scene settings are correct. And save. Now we are ready to go. This is the environment that we want to start with. Of course, you might have different preferences, but at least you know now the procedure. I invite you to explore this area and uh, try a couple of more 
configurations, there is a full documentation of this at the blender.org website. Search for the user's manual and you'll find a full description of every single option. Okay, this is enough for part two. Let's close at this point and I'll meet you again with part three of the Blender Survival Guide.